Hey everyone, welcome to Midweek at the Compass. My name is Jake. I'm our online pastor here. Great to have you joining us as we're having further conversations about what we're already talking over the course of our weekend services. And that reminds me, we are in this series called David. And if you backtrack just to this weekend's message, you learn about how David was a musical prodigy. But don't just take it from me. I want to read just a quick passage here that shows the exact same thing. So I'm in 1 Samuel 16, and I'm going to pick it up in verse 17. And it says, So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well, plays an instrument well, and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine looking man and the Lord is with him. So I wanted to bring on a fine looking man <laughs> who is also a musical prodigy. Uh, and I think I can toss those words out and not say them too lightly. But Ty, Ty Dukes is here with me. Ty Vaughn. What's the preference? Ty, either, Ty either one. Either one works for me. Uh, I answer to both. Sweet. I was going to say, no matter what people call me, I always say, I've been called worse. <laughs> yeah, so, I can say the same for me. So yeah, I'll take either one. It's the way it goes. Yeah. Um, but Ty, you have probably seen him through Compass Online or if you've been at our Naperville or Wheaton campuses, or I'm sure you've been a few been, other places I'm, here. Uh, yeah, I've, been uh, I've been around. But Ty is the man who can play piano. Oh, man. I'm going to say almost like none other. Um, well, thank you. I well, thank love, you. one, listening to you play, and two, just watching you play. Thank you. Um, thank you. That's one of the small, small things about my role is um, I get to experience, like, the best of the best of musicians at the Compass. Um, and, man, you're there. So <laughs> Thank you. What an I, introduction. I appreciate it. So hopefully I'm not, you know, underselling any of it here or maybe overselling over, it. <laughs> overselling well, you the we'll case. find out in a minute, but that's cool. Um, Ty, one, first, thanks for doing this. Well, Appreciate thank you. having thank you here. You. Thank um, you for having me. So let's just talk about music. Talk yeah. about you and music. So yeah. let's start at the beginning. How did you get to be a man who loves piano, who started to play <sighs> music? Tell me a little bit of that story. Well, well, yeah. So very interesting. So first off, I come from a pretty big family. I have six other brothers and sisters, and um, all of us have played an instrument at some point. Um, but my parents, it wasn't necessarily like a forceful thing. It just kind of happened naturally. My dad played guitar, okay. and my mom sang in the choir. And so that's kind of how they met. And so the music thing kind of trickled down. So my oldest brother was like the, and my oldest sister were like the first two to really get started with an instrument. Then another sister played piano and she sang and then so on and so forth. Everybody picked up an instrument. And uh, for me, um, I actually did not start playing an instrument until I was around 16. Um, and that was because I believed, I was like, you know what, I've heard so many horror stories of people being forced to play their instruments. And so I was like, well, they always end up hating it later. I was like, well, that's not going to be me. And so I resisted playing an instrument. My mom would always say, you should play piano. You should play piano. I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to. And um, when I was around 16, I, um, I ended up going to, I was go the church I was going to, we had a, a guest pastor come speak. And at that time, I had already been kind of been thinking about playing an instrument because my, my little sister was playing already. I was like, man, she's going to be better than me at something. And so <laughs> there was a little bit of that in there, too. But at the same time, I was like, there was just this nudge like, hey, you should pick up an instrument. And so uh, this guest speaker came to our church. Uh, I think it was Wheaton Christian Center where, where I was. And he came and spoke. And his whole sermon was about sitting on your gifts. Hmm. And... That really started to get my the the gears in my head turning like, okay, maybe I really need to start looking into this music thing. And so it, it may have even been the next week, the next month. I, I can't remember the exact time, but I ended up going to my little sister's violin recital. And at the recital, they had the, the instructors actually play just to showcase their skills. And the piano instructor, she played. And it was just something about the way the way she was like engaged and just moved and just so like into the music, something about that really moved me. And at that point, I was like, OK, this is what I want to do. And uh, yeah, after that, I picked up an instrument uh, since I was homeschooled. I played for like six, seven hours a day, like practicing. Oh. So I, I was I was very, very in, much in love with playing an instrument. And um, yeah, that's that's really how I got started. Oh, man. So 
you're so much heads and tails above <laughs> what I ever could say I was as a musician. But um, one, I picked up a guitar at 16, so I feel a little bit of kindred oh, spirit no, there. No. Um, but two, also, like in terms of my story, just sports. My dad was a basketball player. Mm-hmm. I liked basketball, but like he never wanted to push me in one direction. Yeah. And I always remember like I wanted to do a different sport than yeah. anyone else in my family, yeah. so I played tennis. Yeah. Um, and it was just one of those things like I wanted to become good at something that I wanted to become good yeah. at that yeah. I couldn't have somebody else tell me how to do it. Is, um, yeah. It seems like you kind of picked up keys because a lot of your siblings were they, yeah, they playing played, other instruments. They were. And they, the, uh, it was either guitar, it was some kind of string instrument. Uh, guitar is two violinists in the family, uh, th- uh, two guitarists, uh, three including my dad, and then a bass player. So it's like I would kind of felt like the oddball out because I picked piano. And it, it was actually kind of funny because when we were all the brothers would be playing together and my dad too, it would be funny because I could tell my dad didn't really know how to like, he didn't understand the intimate, the instrument, but he wanted to be encouraging. So he's like, yeah. you play that. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just really funny <laughs> to see that. Oh, man. I can't tell you how many times my dad said, yeah, hit the ball over the net into the box. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. All right. I appreciate that. So, but yeah, it, it's, it's really cool. Um, you know, it, it it's funny how I went from not playing an instrument and really not really knowing what I wanted to do with my life at all into playing an instrument. And now that's become the only thing I've done. And it's really created some really great opportunities for me um, through that. And, I've man, I've been able to make so many friends, uh, meet some really, really cool people, and even gotten to travel playing an instrument. And it's just like... Got my mom and my mom was right. It's yeah. like you were supposed to play piano, and I was like, "All right, all right, and we'll make that work then." Well, yeah, yeah. So let's keep fast forwarding it then. Yeah. So you started playing at sixteen, and you said something before we pressed record here that I was found fascinating. Yeah. You were sixteen when you started, and yeah. your first gig was when you were sixteen. So yes. <laughs> so you got accomplished here pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. So the it was pretty interesting. So my oldest brother, he played for a lot of gospel artists in the city when I first started playing an instrument. And so what I would do is follow him around to all his gigs. And so what would happen was I would end up like seeing some really, really talented musicians. And it's like as far as the goal of what to strive for, what to practice, that those were the guys. I was seeing it. And um so, yeah, I did that for a good while, and one of the gospel artists he was playing for at the time, really great guy named Jason Shepard, um, he was at, we were at a rehearsal, me and my brother Sheldon, and um, the guy, he's just like, you know what, I, he was just going through, a, changing up his band, getting some new people in, and so me and my brother Sheldon were at the rehearsal, and he was like, all right, Dukes, put your brothers on, and... Prior to that, my brother Steve was just like, all right, guys, learn this dude's music exactly as it goes, like prior to this rehearsal. And so we did that. And so when it came time to play, we played the songs the way they went, but that's all we could do, that we couldn't do anything else outside of that. And then the guy was like, okay, cool. And then we had a gig the next week. So, (laughs) and granted, the people that he's had, you know, playing his band before, uh, the drummer was this great drummer named Rex Hardy. He was the drummer from American Idol. Oh, wow. Um, his keyboardist, um, he's played for, oh, man, uh, I've seen him play for, like, uh, Nick Jonas. So the people that were in this guy's group are playing for some of the big-time artists now. And me and my brother Sheldon, who had just picked up instruments six months ago, we're now in this guy's band, and all we could do was play his songs. But it's like, oh, my gosh, the pressure was definitely on. Cause yeah. The, the different gigs and different churches we played at, oh, man, there were some incredible musicians that we had to, like, get up and play after. So if you want to talk about being thrown into the fire, we definitely were. Love it. So that's really early on, but you were hooked, it yeah. sounds like. So yeah. you ended up going to school yeah. for a music degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I continued on with my, because I love music so much, I went to College of DuPage, and that's where I got a lot of my music theory and just ear training. Um, it was like I had the best of all the worlds. I was playing at church, so I was getting really good ear training. Then I was in school getting classical and jazz training at the same time. And um, it was it was really cool. Um, funny story, 
Um, so when you go to College of DuPage and you take the music courses, there's three classes you're supposed to take together. There's the theory, so you can understand music. Then there's the, the oral skills, so you can be able to hear and sing and stuff. And then there's class piano. Okay. And uh, you would think, you know, oh, I've been playing piano for two years at this point. So I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at piano. And the, the class piano is really just like really basic piano, like level one piano, like Mary Had a Little Lamb play. Okay. And um, I went and took the class, and they have you do like a little placement test to see if you're supposed to, like, if you need to be in that class. So I'm like, I'm going to knock this out of the park. Of course. I didn't. <laughs> and, and to make matters worse, my older brother that played bass tested out a class piano and he had not touched a piano before. And I did not test out a class piano. And yeah, that that really that that really hurt me a little bit. Uh, that, so <laughs> what happened there? But, Just but real yeah, quick. But yeah, um, in the end, it actually ended up being a blessing in disguise because uh, the piano instructor I had at College of DuPage was actually a Christian guy, fantastic pianist, just overall great guy. His name Steve Havens. He ended up being the person that really helped me through some really rough times in life. And I wouldn't have met him or got to know him had I not failed that uh, placement test. And um, it was just re- like I went through a period of time where I was like I was homeless and still trying to go to school. And... Um, I remember sitting in his piano lessons, and he would ask me. He'd be like, "Just how, he would ask me, how are you doing?'" I'm like, "I'm not doing well today." Yeah. And he would just say, "Sit the music to the side and just listen to me talk." And those moments, oh man, like he's a great guy, and he just ended up being the person I needed in my life. But I didn't figure figure that out until like three or four years later. Yeah. But it was all because what I thought was a failure ended up being like the connection I needed to help me later on. Wow, well, man, that's. Awesome. Um, there's so many directions we could go with that, but just honestly, having somebody yeah. be the hands and feet of Jesus to you, one, is fantastic. Uh, but two, I couldn't imagine anything other than the hindsight being able to have perspective yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Like, I've gone through hard times too. Yeah. Um, very different hard yeah. times, but hard times nonetheless. Yeah. And I feel like you don't get clarity on that in the moment. Yeah. But being able to sit back and connect the dots a little bit of uh, maybe God had me fail out oh, of yeah. this remedial <laughs> piano yeah. course so that I could have this connection to help me later on in my life, uh, I think that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's, that's really what I've been finding a lot in my just both in music and just in life, which music has like created all these, like put me in all these positions where ministry actually happens. Yeah. And so like one of my favorite things to say is just like piano is what I do, but a follower of Christ is what I am. And so what I do can always change at any moment. So <laughs> it's like one day I'll, like, I'll get like, I'm playing at this thing and it's like, God, why, why am I here at this thing? I know whatever, I'm getting a paycheck, whatever. But there's always another layer of why I'm in the position that I'm in. Huh. And I always, it's like, for whatever reason, it'll be like God says like, okay, I need you to give to this person. I'm like, I'm just supposed to play. <laughs> but, you know, it's just being open to like, what I do can always change in the moment. And like having all these different experiences and stuff and being able to look back and now like the stuff I'm able to say in like conversations and how I'm able to relate to people. It only came from like really looking back at those hard times. It was like, Oh, God didn't want that to happen to me, but he helped carry me through it. Hmm. And I remember when I was going, if I could talk just a little bit about that yeah, period please. of time of being homeless, Go like, for it. um, I was, that was one of the roughest times in my life, honestly. And it was, it was like maybe a two or three year period of where it was, it was just rough. Um, I thank God I never had to sleep outside. Um, always had a roof over my head, be it, you know, a two bedroom house or so, uh, apartment or something like that. But it was just that fact of like not having my own space and not even being sure sometimes like, okay, am I going to be sleeping here or sleeping there? I don't know. And, um, I just remember when I was going through that, I remember God just saying like, I need you to keep yourself, like stick with me because there's going to come a time where you meet somebody that's going through the same thing. And what you do in this space now is going to be your answer to them later. Hmm. And I held on to that. And, you know, fast forward to when I actually got out of that situation, everything was all great. I, I was working a retail job in downtown Naperville. And 
that moment happened where I met the person that was going through the thing that I was going through, that I went through. And I had to give that person an answer. And fortunately, like, it was... It was the answer, like, I stuck with God, and this is what God's done for me. And uh, it was just so incredible because at the time, I didn't know if the guy was a Christian. I didn't know what his beliefs were. But it was just the very fact that his story sounded so similar to mine. And I'm like, I've been waiting to meet you. And I just was telling him, like, you know, God carried—I was in that position. God carried me through all of that and just— this is where I'm at now, and the same thing is going to happen for you. And he told me literally, he's like, you know, as I was walking to the store, like I was praying that God would help, like send the person to help me. And it was right around closing time when he showed up, and he just happened to walk right up to me, and I was the first person he talked to. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man, that's about the coolest story I think I've heard <laughs> on any of these podcasts so far. Uh, one, thank you for sharing that. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, of course. Everybody has a story, and it's not always rainbows and butterflies. It's not, it's not. But there's still a point to them. Mm-hmm. Um, praise God that he showed you what the point was yeah. to at least some of it, and yeah. maybe there's more to come still. But, yeah. Um, I don't I would, it's just an encouragement to me. Like the, the hard things in life yeah. um, are hard for a season and yeah. sometimes for a really long season. Yeah. But it's not just to keep us in the same place and it's yeah. not just only to refine us for a time or season. Yeah. Those are things that we can pay forward. I think in the church realm, we call it discipleship. Yeah. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But even beyond that, like that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So, Keep talking about what have we seen from you since? So yeah, you've yeah. gotten through college and yeah, now yeah. you're still working as a professional musician. Yes, yes, this like. is true. This is true. So now I am I I'm working as a professional musician full time now. I I I had left that retail job of five years. Uh, this is it's actually been two almost three years since I left that job. And granted, I was part time at that job and I was making good money. They had just given me like a a, a raise, all this great stuff. And I was just like, you know what, God, I don't feel like I'm I'm quite living out what I'm supposed to be doing because I was still playing an instrument and stuff. And I was like, you know what, Lord, I need to take like I need to figure out what I'm what I'm need to do with this music. I got all this music equipment. What am I gonna do? So I ended up taking a week away from that job, just like a little vacation, and spent some time like trying to write and stuff. And for like the first time in my life, I was like, hey, I'm actually like able to write music. Like this feels like something. So, long story short, talked to my family. It was like, hey, I'm thinking about leaving my job, <laughs> going on to do this music thing full time. And I got the green light from my oldest brother who really helped me, like, get to where I was at the time. And he was like, all right, if you feel like God's calling you to do this, let's do it. And so I told, I remember I was like, all right, God, if we're doing this, there's only two requests. I just want to be able to pay my bills. And, <laughs> and I like to like do re- like buy nice gifts for other people and stuff. So it's like, as long as I can do the two things, pay my bills and still do nice stuff for other people, let's go for it. Yeah. And my life after that moment, just like skyrocketed after I left that job and it, it didn't make sense on paper, but like, I've gotten so many different opportunities and met so many people. Like now I work for uh, an incredible music production company uh, uh, called Delaney Land that just started. And it's among, I'm able to work with some of the greatest producers like in the world. And these are people I've always looked up to people that have made song, like produce songs for gospel artists that are really, really big time. Um, I even got the opportunity to work with one of my favorite um, bass, my uh, favorite artist's bass player, uh, Israel Holden's bass player. Sorry, bass player. I got a chance to work with him, and I absolutely love Israel Holden. Oh, so, yeah. so it's just like I've I've gotten to you know got linked up with the Compass Church. And as a matter of fact, I didn't start really being. I wasn't able to be at the Compass Church until I left that other place. And it was just so many different doors that opened up for me. And now I went from the guy that anybody barely knew to now. My phone doesn't stop ringing. <laughs> For better or worse, For right? For better or worse. So, but it's been it's been really like a blessing. Like, it just the music part. I love music, um, but the great part about it too is just being able to like really share the same excitement that God has like brought in my life with other people. Yeah. And um, a lot of times when I play places, a lot, one of the compliments that people usually give me is like. I love watching you play. Hmm. And um, like I really started paying attention to that because 
sometimes we all have like this joy and all God's done so much stuff, but we don't express it. And I have had my fair share of rough times in life. And I'm like, you know what? I'm happy. Yeah. Like I'm going to show that. And aside, uh, along with that, like I love music. And so you combine the love of like what God has done with me for me and the love of what I'm actually getting to do. That's, that's where that joy is coming from. And um, it's really another way to being able to connect with people hmm. for me because people don't always connect with they don't they don't know what I play they they don't remember what I play but if I can express some way where I can connect to somebody even if they don't hear me it's through my smile through what I do and that has I believe ministered to more people than anything I've ever played because they don't remember what I play but yeah. they remember what they saw and so. I, I I always love being able to express myself musically uh, and just enjoy what I do, but also being able to minister to people in that way too. That's fantastic. So I want to backtrack yeah. for like two points here to yeah. kind of wrap things up a little yeah. bit. Um, the first one is just a question of how did you get to start playing at church? Was yeah. that just the natural thing of as soon as yeah. you knew what you were doing, you had to, or you wanted to, yeah. um, what did that look like? Yeah. So it actually started out. So when I picked up an instrument, we were actually going to youth group at our church. And so my oldest brother was one of the youth leaders. And so he wanted to put together a band for the, the youth group. And so that's kind of how that got started. I was playing in church from that moment for the youth group. And so he also played for the worship team on week on Sundays, on weekends. And so it was like, hey, you're coming, so with. You're coming with. So it was just kind of that was how I started was in church, uh, literally just playing for youth group and then Sunday morning services. And then since my friends played at different places, that's how I got to go to like different churches and stuff like that and play. And um, that's, yeah, that's yeah. how I got started, playing in church. Uh, so that has a soft spot for me. And I don't like to make these conversations yeah, yeah, yeah. about me, but um, I led our youth band for, oh, I don't know, eight years yeah. or so. Oh, yeah. Um, I, and I loved it. One, yeah. because you got, like, musical prodigies yeah, and yeah. the people that are just so unsure of themselves and yeah, you're trying yeah. to find a way to meld it all together that's yeah. still a worshipful experience. Yes, and, yes. Uh, man, some people really took off and some people oh. just kind of grin and you bear it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I I love that part of your story because yeah. quite frankly, it just hits home. Uh, there are so many people that have started through youth bands that yeah. I know are still playing music. Um and I don't think I had much to do with any of it, but it's still really cool to see God being present in all that and unfolding yeah. people's stories. And um, whether it's a big touch point or a small touch point yeah. through something like, you know, a Thursday night student band yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. Uh, some people really just resonated with it and stuck yeah. with it because of it. And that's amazing. So yep. um, that one it speaks to me personally. So, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We got that you. in common. We got that in common. Uh, so there we go. I'm a 16 year old yeah. starting music and then yeah. youth, youth group, band. Youth band. And then uh, because all of the, again, all my friends were playing, everybody who played at different churches and stuff. And that's really how I've been able to stay connected with so many different churches in the Chicago land areas. Cause all my friends are all the people playing at these different churches. So I, I know offhand, I'm probably connected to at least five or six different churches just cause I got a friend, a worship leader friend that plays here or, or a bass player friend that plays there. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and, and it, it's really, it's really cool is a lot of us have still, uh, we're still connected. Uh, some, again, some of them have gone on to play for like some really amazing stuff. Uh, again, one of my bass player friends, uh, you name it, he's probably played for him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the most recent, uh, Nick Jonas, I guess, is going to be the guy of the day, but he's played for him. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, you know, it, but it, it's really cool. Um, yeah, as church was how I started, and it's continued to be, be the thing that I continue to do. Um, and I really enjoy it. I enjoy um, just hearing people's stories and just getting the opportunity to, like, hear how music ministers to them yeah. or if a song lyric or something. Um, one of the coolest things I've actually experienced is just like people getting healed through, mm. through the music. And at first I was like, all right, you know, is this really, ha what's really happening here? But it started happening continually. And one of the times I really remember is that I, I was at compass actually playing. Okay. And it, it it happened after service. I don't even remember what song we played, but this lady had came up to me after service 
and she was almost in tears. And she said, you know, I really ca- I came in here and I was really like just feeling like a really heavy burden. And I heard the music and I felt that lift. Hmm. And from that moment on, it was like for me, I was like, okay, this is really serious what we're doing here. Like we can't just get up here and just like play songs. This is an opportunity to really like somebody can receive healing through that. Like yeah. whether they say anything to us or not, it's still our responsibility to like aim to minister and like have that belief, have that faith that somebody's life could be changed in that moment. And so it doesn't matter, you know, who's in the band, who's playing. It, it's, it's all about your heart and you, like, what 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 do you believe? What does Jesus said? Faith, all it takes is the faith of a must, the size of a mustard seed to move mountains. Like, yeah. do you believe that? And that's those moments were the times that really challenged me. And I was like, okay, when I get up, my goal is to believe that somebody is going to be healed. Be it, be it because a song they heard, a li- whatever, whatever. Anytime I get up here is an opportunity to minister to somebody. It's a chance for people to experience and meet Jesus. It is, it is. That's awesome. So last question here. Yeah. And I want to backtrack to one of the first things that you talked about yeah, is yeah. where, you know, your personal conviction to start even playing piano oh, came boy. from. Oh boy, yeah. And yeah. that was really just, you know, are you going to sit on your gifts? Yeah. So I'm wondering if you can put on the Pastor Tyvon hat here. All right, let me see. All right. And just talk a little bit about that because my personal belief is God has gifted every single one of us. Yeah. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you've got spiritual gifts as well that you can continue to yeah. develop and refine. Yeah. Um, but that was a point for you. So I'm wondering what you could say to people that are joining us here about you know, sitting on a gift and yeah. what are you going to do with what God has already provided you? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, man, it was, it was a very interesting like journey and just process because one of the things that happened to me coming from a big family is everybody was like good at something yeah. and just coming from a space of like, wherever I went, I was this person's little brother, this person's little sibling. And it was really just trying to find a space where I fit in. And, like, I had to learn really, like, how to accept what I, who I was and that kind of stuff. And that, that, was, that was an interesting time. And um, playing an instrument did help. Yeah. Um, because it was like, oh, this is something that I can do and really just find in my space. Because, again, I, it was a bunch of different piano players and all that stuff. And I, I, I struggled a lot with just, like, self-esteem because it was like everybody could do stuff that I couldn't. And it, it, it's like, all right, well, maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to do. And, and so when you go through stuff like that, like, you, you, you start to question, okay, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Hmm. And um, that is part of what, like, sitting on your gifts does is it, you, 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 you really just start to question, why am I here? And in God, like, providing that answer for you, there's so many other things that open up for you. And that's what happened for me is, like, once I finally, like, accepted the call of what I was supposed to do, it didn't matter who else was doing it. It was like there might be six other piano players doing stuff, but God is like, I got a specific thing that you only you can do. And uh, one of the the coolest things I've actually heard pertaining to this sort of thing— um, I like to watch like different comedians and stuff. And there's this one comedian, I forget his name. I wish I could remember, but he did this comedy special where he would just show different people's stories and stuff. And so one, one of the stories he did was there's this guy, he's a painter and he painted this picture. There were three fishermen. There were two standing on, standing up fishing. And then there was one that was sitting down fishing. And so what you notice is one of the guys, he's actually missing, missing the leg. He's handicapped. Okay. And so they're all fishing. And what you notice is, like, the fishing rods, they only come up to a certain depth, the two guys that are standing. And then there's the guy that's sitting out lower. His fishing pole is going deeper into the water. And so it's like sometimes we feel like we've got all these setbacks and stuff that keeps us from doing stuff. But ultimately, you're able to reach something that other people couldn't. Hmm. And so we, we sit on our gifts thinking, like, oh, I can't do this as well as somebody else. I can't. I don't have what they have. I can't. I don't have the the resources to do what they do. Yeah. I didn't even start off like they did, but ultimately, if God's like, 
I need you to do this because there's somebody that you can reach that the other two people standing next to you don't have the means or the the ability to do so. They're still able to do it. Yeah. Do reach the people they're supposed to reach. That's why one's on the right and one's on the left. But the guy in the middle is like, I'm handicapped, but there's somebody deeper, somebody that the other two can't reach. And so in accepting like that calling to what I was supposed to do, it's given me opportunities to do that where I was able to speak to people and just minister to people. And it's also been a ministry to me to like people have been able to speak and help me as well. And being able to like all those spaces where I felt uncomfortable or self-esteem, all that stuff. It was like, God's like, okay, this is why I need you to do this. It's not just about you. Yeah. It's about the person next to you. And that is another reason to really step into what God's called you to do is, is we always feel like I need something to help me with my purpose. It's not just, it's not about us. Hmm. It's about somebody else. It's one of my favorite lines just in general is it, it, your Christian faith, it's not about you. Yeah. It never has been. Yeah. Um, and praise God that you're not me and you're not Ty because you weren't called to reach the people that either of us were yeah. called to reach. There are people that God has put into your sphere and influence all of you joining us, that you were made uniquely and wonderfully and fearfully to reach that we would never have the ability to. Like, I think about that with my kids. Yeah. They are set to reach people and generations that I would never even come close to being able to. Yeah. And it's not a better or worse. It's just God has designed them specifically for a different time and place than they have for me. Yeah. And that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where it really helps with the comparison game. Because yeah. if I was going to compare myself <laughs> musically to you, it's just like, you know. Oh, there's somebody you can reach that yeah, I can't. There you go. There, there you exactly. Go. There, there you go. But it's not about the talent or skill. Yeah. It's about what are we doing with what God has given exactly. us. Exactly. It's the parable of the talents. Yeah. God might have given you a lot. He might have given you a little. But he still expects you to do something with what he's given you. Exactly. So thank you for doing something with what God has given you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's just been great being able to share the different stories, be it through music and or anything else. And funny enough, because I picked up an instrument, like a lot of the places where life got hard, the people that helped me out were in the music industry. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like. God has an ultimate plan for us, and you just follow along, and you don't start connecting the dots until later. You're like, oh, that's why I had to, oh, that's why he needed, oh, my gosh. And so I've had so many of these these moments in life where I'm just like, oh, oh, I get, oh, my gosh. Right, I get, right, right, right. And so it's like just, just stick with God. Like, as hard as stuff gets, again— you're going to run into that person that's going to have, be going through the same thing, and they're going to ask you, what did you do in that situation? And you have to give an answer to them. Um, and just really, like, focus on what you're doing right now and what that answer, what you want your answer to be to another person. Either it's going to be, this is what I should have done, <laughs> this is what I wish I did, or it's going to be, this is what I did, I stuck with God, and this is how God carried me through. And so they're going to they're going to get an answer one way or the other yeah. but depending on what you do in those in those spaces determines what your answer is going to be to them sweet all right, let's leave it there. So I appreciate, Ty, thanks for coming in and doing thank this. Thank you, thank uh, you. I know you've got a busy stretch coming up here, <laughs> so the fact that you were able to peel off a little bit of time before oh, all boy. that starts, uh, man, I'm grateful for it. Uh, well, thank you, thank you. I got you. to learn more about you through doing this, and that's awesome to me because well, thank you, thank you. I enjoy watching you play too. Oh, thank you. But beyond that, man, I just enjoy you as a person. Uh, thank you, So thank the you. times we get to cut it up, I'm not going to say no to it. So. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Uh, and everyone, thank you for joining us here on Midweek at the Compass. Make sure to stop back next week. We're be joined by Eric Lichty. He's our pastor of stewardship because coming up on our weekend services, we're going to have a rise up reveal to talk about this whole two year process of doing things like building a campus for our South Naperville people. What did that look like? What are some of the things that we learned through it? What are some of the behind the scene things and numbers and stats that maybe you haven't heard as much about? We're going to be able to talk about those things next time we're together. So stop back here at Midweek at the Compass.